Today we at Scanda Tech will show you how to replace the battery in the iPhone 6S. Here's a little brochure in here just thanking you for your business and you can find more information on our website. Let's remove this layer. Here we have a Phillips screwdriver for removing some of the internal screws. Here we have a little pry tool. Here we have a pentalobe screwdriver for removing the screws in the bottom of the phone. Here we have a tweezers. And here we have a plastic spudger pry tool for removing some of the connectors inside the phone. Let's remove another layer. And here's the battery for the iPhone 6S inside an electrostatic discharge safe plastic bag. Now that we're familiar with the tools, let's get to the battery replacement itself. As with any hardware, replacement complications can arise, but if following this guide and our text guide with pictures, which can be found on our website, with patience, we'll walk you through the process step by step. We recommend listening to the whole video without skipping any steps as we highlight potential difficulties. So the first thing you want to do is power off your device by pushing and holding in on the power button. So go ahead and turn that off. Next, what you want to do is you want to grab your pentalobe screwdriver and you want to remove these two screws in the bottom of the phone right here. So let's go ahead and remove those screws. Sometimes they come out with a screwdriver, set them off in a safe place. If they don't come out, you can just grab them with your thumbnail. Or if it's really hard for you to grab, you can grab it with the tweezers once it's loose. Then what you want to do is grab your suction cup tool, and you want to put it down here as close to the home button as possible. You don't want to get it on the home button or it won't suction very well. So stay just above the home button, and press down, make sure that it's attached securely. Then what you can do is start pulling up a little bit, and you can see that there's a little bit of gap starting right here. Especially look right here above the headphone jack because it has a little bit of a notch right here. Now what you can do very carefully is use the tweezers and try and make sure to not scratch up your frame or anything. But what you can do is if you apply a little bit of pressure upwards, just keep some firm tension right here on, with your finger. And you can use this and slip under here a little bit. And so you can just pry really carefully and then slip over here and just pry really carefully. I wanted to mention this iPhone has been opened up before, so it's not coming apart quite as hard. Yours may be coming apart a little harder if it's the first time it's been open, because there's actually some adhesive that runs along the edge here. Now what I would recommend once you get that opened up a little bit with the tweezers is that you carefully pry with this plastic pry tool so you don't do any damage to the phone. And as you can see, this is starting to separate pretty well here for me. If you need to very carefully, if it's not separating very well, you can just carefully slide under here along the very edge with your plastic pry tool and as you can see it's starting to open up here. So now that we can see that it's going to open up all the way, let's go ahead and remove this suction tool. And you can remove it just by picking up on this little part that sticks up like that. So let's get that out of the way. Now that we have our screen loosened up, we can go ahead and carefully lift up. Now don't lift up past the 90 degrees to put unnecessary strain on these connectors here. So now first what we're going to do, we're going to use our Phillips screwdriver and we're going to remove these two screws right here that hold the battery connector down. Now if they're magnetic, you can take them off with the screwdriver. Make sure to keep these in the right order so you know how they go back together because they're two different lengths. Now what I would recommend first is loosening this up with the plastic pry tool. Just set that off to the side in the right order so you know how it goes with your screws. Now next what we're going to do is we're going to pry carefully under this battery connector right here and we're going to get this connector up out of the way. Now the next thing we want to do is we want to grab our new battery. You want to lay it on top of the old battery here and we want to connect it down in here where this other one was connected and then just gently lay your screen down on top of the battery. So you would go ahead and power up your phone. Let it power up all the way. So now if this were your new phone, you can see that yes, it has plenty of charge. If it doesn't have enough charge, plug it in. It won't hurt it to be plugged in like this without having the screen on all the way. And let the battery charge for about 15 minutes, and then you can turn it off and continue on with your install. Next, you want to power off your device again. Now that you're still holding the screen at 90 degrees like this, if you're able to securely lean the front assembly against a solid object or have someone else hold it while you proceed, it could save some time and hassle not having to disconnect and reconnect these connectors right here which can sometimes be a difficult task. If proceeding this way, make sure that the front assembly is absolutely secure as the LCD touch home button and other components could get damaged if these flexes tear or get damaged. There's lots of flex cable under this shield right here. If you proceed without removing the front assembly, you can at any moment stop and go back to this step and remove the front assembly. Now the way that we recommend to do it is to totally remove the front assembly, so we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Next we'll use the Phillips screwdriver again. We're gonna go ahead and remove these four screws in this shield right here, so go ahead and remove those. Make sure to set these off in the right order as well so you don't get them mixed up when you put them back.
and you can go ahead and remove this shield and set it off with your screws. So now what I would recommend doing is using this plastic spudger pry tool and we're going to sneak under this first connector right here and carefully disconnect this and we're going to go ahead and reconnect this connector number two. Now be very careful with the home button connector if it gets damaged and needs to be replaced your touch ID will no longer work so be very careful. Then here's the third connector you just want to take them at the right order as you take them off as they're stacked. They're kind of stacked in the layers here. So those three connectors as you can see. So now that they're loose we can go ahead and remove the LCD screen. So next let's kind of go over what to expect under the battery. So as you remember earlier I showed you these adhesive strips. So what they are they lay under the battery just like this running this direction. So as you can see there's two, two, two tabs right here. So we want to go ahead and peel these up. You want to be careful not to tear them. You just want to peel them loose. So now the next thing to go over is under the battery right here, running down to these volume buttons on the side here, there's a flex cable that runs over here to the motherboard. So anything from up here we can't pry at all. What we're going to do is we're going to use the tweezers and pry under here. I'm just using this for demonstrating. And we can't pry on this side at all either because of the motherboard here. You do not want to damage this motherboard in any way and prying on it could result in damage. So we've got to be very careful. So no prying at all from this side with the motherboard. No prying at all from here up with the volume buttons because of this flex cable that runs under here. So next what we're going to do, what we recommend is using like a heat gun like this or a hair dryer or something. I'm going to be using this heat gun. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat on the back side here, only on this back part where the battery is. Now be in mind where the volume buttons here. From the volume buttons up we don't want to heat. We only want to heat from here over and we don't want to heat on this side because of the motherboard being in here. So only in this section right here can we heat. So let's go ahead and apply some heat to soften the adhesive. You don't want to heat it too hot, just a little bit at a time. Don't get it so hot that you can't stand to touch it. Then you should be okay. Also be mindful when you're using the heat gun that you don't have any screws that are going to get blown away when you use it. I would recommend using the heat gun in a different location so it doesn't blow your screws away. Otherwise you could get them all mixed up so you don't know where they go. So now that you've given it some heat, what we want to do is we want to use the back side of this tweezers right here because it's dull. We don't want to use anything sharp because it could damage the battery and it could potentially explode if it gets punctured. So we want to slip down in here. So I want to carefully rock up a little with the tweezers. And this can come out really hard if it's the first time this battery has been replaced. And so what you want to do is make sure you don't go up above the volume buttons here. You want to stay from the volume buttons on down. You want to try to slip up there and pry up a little bit. And like I said, sometimes it can come apart really hard. Now what our goal is, is we're going to try to loosen this up a little bit so we have room to get this adhesive strip started. So what we want to do is we want to grab onto this adhesive strip right here. Now be careful, they do tend to tear sometimes and mine might tear on me. The goal is to try to pull at an angle a little bit like this and slip around this corner as quickly as possible. And what you want to do now that you're slipped around past that corner there, is you just want to carefully, slowly, steadily keep pulling and hopefully this adhesive strip will let loose. So it looks like it went most of the way if not quite all. At this point you want to feel your phone if it's totally cooled off you might want to apply a little more heat on the back side right here. So next we need to remove this second strip right here. So what we're going to do is use our tweezers again and we're just going to carefully pry up and keep prying up on this part here. We have to try to pry this up enough so that we can hopefully get this thing started right here. And so what we want to try to do is just have it come at an angle. And my strip tore when it was only about this far in. And then what we need to do is pretty much just pry up. We need to try to work this loose. And now we're just only going up to where the volume button starts right here. Now if you're really careful so you don't puncture the battery in any way, sometimes you can sneak under there and get a hold of it with the tweezers like this, which I was able to, and you can continue to pull it out like this. So now if that doesn't get it all or if you can't do that, then you need to just keep prying up and very carefully just lift this up. And at this point, now there's not much adhesive left at all, so it'll come right out then. Yeah, but now that we got the battery loose, let's go ahead and get ready to reinstall our new one. So now we're going to unpackage our new battery here. If you want, you can remove the stickers and everything, get it all ready. And what we're going to talk about is installing the adhesive strips. Instead of putting it in the phone first, what we found, if you flip the battery over like this, and if we take the adhesive strips and we peel it apart, and whichever side that stays on here, 
that's the side we want to work with. And so what we're going to do is we're going to center this right on the battery. We're going to line this edge up with the black part there with the end of the battery. And we're going to set the strips down like that and push them down. Then what we can do, I'm going to use my tweezers for this so you can see it easier. We can peel these parts off. Then we can stick these down on the battery. Then now that this is still stuck down well, what we can do is we can just kind of pull out an angle like this and make so it doesn't pull the adhesive loose off the phone. And it comes off like that. Next, you get your phone around. Now that your adhesive is still all good on the battery, what we have to do is we have to set this kind of centered down in the hole. We only get one chance at this because its adhesive is very sticky. You want to try to make so this connector lines up down here for sure, but it should line up pretty well if you just set it down in here, kind of center it in the thing, and just press it down good. Now watch this connector, make sure it doesn't connect for now. We don't want to connect it, so just keep an eye on that. Now we're all set to reassemble the LCD screen. So we'll grab the screen, hold it up here at a 90 degrees. So now when reconnecting these connectors right here, they're tiny so it's difficult to get them right. They need to be perfectly aligned to the receiving end when connected all the way. If one of the connectors is even slightly dislocated, the motherboard will not detect it. A soft click is heard when the connector snaps correctly into place. If the touchscreen connector is not correctly in place, the touchscreen will not work. Same goes for the earpiece speaker and the front camera connector and the home button connector. If the LCD connector is not in place, the LCD will either not work or bars or lines will appear on the screen. If this happens once the phone is fully put together, simply go back to this step and disconnect and reconnect the connectors again. So let's go ahead and start reconnecting. Now what we want to do, remember how they're in layers like this, we want to take the bottom one and we want to connect it in here and you could hear that soft click when it clicked in. Next we want to take this next one. Now don't force it if it doesn't want to go in. Just make sure that you got it aligned in the right place and then push down you should hear a soft click. It should go. Then we'll take the last one. Now what we're going to do is reconnect the battery connector down here. Make sure that that's pushed down. Now we're going to gently lay the LCD screen down and we're going to test to make sure that the screen works before we put it all back together. This may seem like an unnecessary step, but this saves you a step in the event that you didn't get the connectors together quite right. And in this case, it looks like everything's working. The touch screen works okay, so we know that it's all working. So go ahead and power off your device again one more time. So next, grab your plate and set it down on here. Now you can start with whatever screw you want. I'm going to choose this corner right here. Now I'm not putting that screw in tight all the way right now until I get some more in. So now we're going to grab this one, put the opposite corner in. Now you can go ahead and snug both of the screws up. Next, screw number three. And screw number four. Next, you want to grab the plate for the battery connector and set it down on there. Put your first screw in. Put your second screw in. Then we're ready to close up the screen. So just gently set the screen down. Then what we're going to want to do is we want to get the front started in first on the top part right here. So what we want to do is we need to tip it up at an angle like this. Get the top started in first and then what you can do is gently set it down and just kind of work your way down through. You can kind of feel it snap in now that it's snapped in all the way. Next you want to grab your bottom screws and put them in here. I'm using a tweezers so it's easier to grab and so you can see. So you can just set them in there, use your pentalobe screwdriver. Go ahead and screw them in all the way. Next, one final time, let's power on the device. Now that you've powered on the device, make sure that everything's working. And thank you for choosing Scandatech. We hope you enjoy your new battery.